Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you a full scale Shutterfly review. What's the best paper to choose? What's the best binding to choose? Is it worth upgrading for the six color printing? If you want to know the answer, stay tuned in. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. So I wrote about Shutterfly's lay flat photo book a few years back and you guys found that video quite helpful and I have received so many questions about Shutterfly since then but I wasn't able to fully answer them because that was my only book from Shutterfly. There are many reasons for that. The, the main one is their shipping. It's very expensive if you want to do it outside the US. But anyway, I wanted to get all of their books to be able to answer these questions to show you them. And I was really curious as well to see how the different options compare. So a few words about Shutterfly. Shutterfly is one of the four giants, as I call them. Mixbook, Blab, Shutterfly and Photobook Worldwide. They are the biggest corporations around the world who create photo books and Shutterfly has not just a huge photo gift range but they also have a really sizable and good photo book range too. They offer hundreds of personalized products and when I say hundreds I'm not lying there are so many you can just scroll 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 and you'll find everything from chopping boards to mugs to um, clothes and desk decorations all kinds of wall art and you can put your photo on basically anything and there is one specific um, category or section of the homepage which is dedicated to photo books so the first thing you'll see when you go onto the shutterfly website is that their photo book range is laid out quite logically and you know that's a good thing when it comes to photo books because they can be so confusing especially when you have lots of options so when you go onto the Shutterfly website, first of all, you have to select a book template and then you have to select a book size. Then the editor is going to load up. You can start editing your photo book based on a ready-made book template. And inside the editor, you're going to be able to select different paper types, different binding types and different upgrades such as the boxes or six color printing. So the good thing about that is that if you change your mind halfway through your project that you want a different kind of paper or a different kind of binding, you don't have to restart your project. You can just change it in the editing panel. But at the same time, when you start your photo book, you don't know what kind of paper options are available and what kind of bindings are available. So you have to get into the editor to see that and to get a price estimate because the prices are not on the website for each specific option. So I'm going to get into my close-up shots in a second and I will show you all the available options for every single category, sizes, cover, binding, paper, print quality, editing. The four books that I've got here, I've got one which is a deluxe lay flat and I have a linen cover, a die cut, I've got a soft cover and I have a matte hardcover as well so I can show you all the different options. Now besides the different bindings and papers you can choose, Shutterfly also offers now a six color printing and I was very curious about the six color printing because as you know they use digital press printers for their photo books and I was wanting to know how much better the six color printing is is it really worth the upgrade or is it just a marketing catch? Now let's get into my close-up shots. So let's start with the sizes. You've got six basic sizes to choose from, eight by eight inch square, which is this one here, 10 by 10 inches square and 12 by 12 inches square, so small, medium and large. You've got two landscape sizes, eight by 11 inches and 11 by 14 inches and you've also got one portrait size, which is 11 by eight inches. Besides this, they also have an instant book, which is six by six inches, so a little bit smaller, and I think that's available from the smartphone app. So as you can see, the size selection is really good. Uh, you've got small, medium, large, you've got landscape, portrait, square. It's not the biggest size selection, but I'm sure whatever you need, you'll find something that suits your project. So no complaints here. Let's move on to the covers. You can choose from the following, glossy soft cover, glossy hardcover with or without metallic embellishments, matte hardcover leather, and die cut. This list looks great at first sight, but you have to remember that when it comes to Shutterfly, 
certain paper types are locked to certain cover types which are locked to certain binding types so technically you can't choose any of these covers for your book just the one that's available for that specific type of book now let's have a look at these covers so the first one i want to show you is the soft cover as you can see is very shiny and you can personalize the front and back and there is a small barcode on the back nothing on the spine because it's soft cover and it is quite a strong cover stock so it's not going to get damaged easily so this cover is a good budget cover just glossy but fully personalized and the quality is quite good and the print as well the second one is the glossy hardcover which as you can see is very shiny there is a lamination on it and you've got the same personalization on the front but you can have spine text on this one and on the back you'll see again a little barcode. I love the hardcover, it's a very good strong cover and you can also have it in the matte finish which is this one. So have a look at the difference between the two. One is very glossy and the other one barely has any shine at all. It also feels much smoother when you touch it but what I noticed here is you can see the fold uh, around the spine there is a, a slight crease there which is not very nice again it's fully personalized you've got a small barcode on the back and it opens the same way the last one I want to show you here is the die cut linen cover now die cut means that you've got this window at the front and you can feature one image here and I think you can choose from leather or linen in two colors for the material. I chose the linen and I think it's a very nice cover. It, it certainly looks more elegant and more minimalist, but I have some slight issues with the quality. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but the corners are not cut very neatly in the window. So you can see the cut lines inside. And also the texture of the linen uh, has some slight bubbles on it, just very minor bubbles, so it doesn't feel like a very luxurious um, linen stock, but nevertheless, it's a nice different option to the other ones. I haven't got the genuine leather one that's a black cover and you can't personalize anything on it. And once again, here are the four covers side by side. So soft cover, glossy hard, matte hard and linen now one thing i forgot to say is for the glossy hardcover you can choose metallic accents which is basically a text or a clip art something that's going to be gold or silver and it really pops out from the cover that's a very good upgrade to choose especially for a wedding book or something very elegant and special let's have a look at the bindings so shutterfly offers three different binding types which is perfect binding hinged lay flat and deluxe seamless lay flat binding the perfect binding of course means that the pages are printed as single sheets and they are glued together at the spine and for that reason you can't open the book fully flat it closes and there is a little section getting lost in the middle or the gutter now if you look at this book at the spine you can see that the gluing is quite thick there so that's how much is basically getting lost that you can't see when the book opens it's a strong binding but what I noticed here is, let me just show you an example. So this is a standard layout from the Shutterfly themes and ready-made books. And 90% of those layouts are basically double page spreads where the layout continues onto the other page. And this is something that really becomes an issue with these books because have a look at the photo in the middle. So here I'm supposed to have a face, two eyes and the nose and you can't see anything from it. So there's almost like an inch getting lost in the middle and that's not the worst part if you also look the lines don't match up so there's a misalignment between the sheets this page is a little bit higher up than the other one and the line doesn't continue properly now this one is just a soft cover book and these things do happen with some budget books but uh, you'll see this is not unique to this book binding let's have a look at the perfect binding when it comes to the hardcover books now this one is perfect bound again so it doesn't stay fully flat However, this one seems to have stitching in the middle, which basically holds the book together a little bit stronger, but there is still glue at the spine holding these, the stitching together. So it's like a double binding, which is much better for hardcover books. So that's all good. And if you look at a spread like this, it looks absolutely perfect, beautiful, nicely laid out. But as soon as we come to that page that I showed you before, which is a double page spread, 
the same issue is there. And this time you'll see that my nose is actually doubled and again, it's completely misaligned, nothing continues on and the middle of the, of the spread is completely messed up. So my issue with this is not that this happens because as I mentioned, it happens quite a lot with perfect bound books. The problem is that most of Shutterfly's themes and ready-made books contain 80-90% these kind of layouts. So these layouts work perfectly well in this book, but once you have layouts that go across two pages, you have to be very careful with the middle because it's not going to look great. The second type of binding is the hinged lay flat. And hinged lay flat basically means that it's a cheaper version of lay flat where the pages are still printed as a single sheet, but they are stuck to a hinge in the middle and the hinge allows the book to stay fully flat. So as you can see, when I start paging this book, it stays fully flat without me holding it down. And that's how the hinges look from the top. You can see the little black thingies there. You would think that now since this is lay flat, it's going to be perfect for those lovely panoramic shots, but there we go. The same issue again, I have two noses, two mouths, and the lines are misaligned. It's not a perfect straight line. So very disappointing, even if you choose the lay flat option, the, the hinged lay flat option, the, the panoramic double paste spreads are not going to work. Now let's have a look at the third binding type, which is the deluxe seamless lay flat. Now, if you look at this one, it stays perfectly flat, but this one is printed on a double page spread and this sheet is stuck to this double page spread. So there's nothing getting lost in the middle and it's printed as a, a double page basically. Now, this also makes the pages much thicker, but more on that later. And the good thing about this uh, binding type is that if I come to my page, now it's finally perfect the layout actually carries on to the next page without any break or misalignment. And this is what I was kind of expecting from the hinged lay flat version as well, but sadly that's not the case. So my advice here is if you want to create double page spreads like this, layouts which continue from the left to the right side, if you have the budget, please go for the deluxe lay flat because the other ones are just going to mess up your layouts. Eyes are going to be missing, faces are going to be missing, text is going to be missing from the middle. So the other binding types are great for single page layouts like um, this one but anything that goes around two pages, you'll need a deluxe lay flat um, version for that. Let's move on to the paper types. So they've got four different paper types. And the first one is the standard, which to me looks like a matte paper. So that's the texture of the paper. And as you can see, it barely has any shine at all. Colors look quite natural on it. They are not extremely vibrant and the dynamic range is a little bit diminished. But still, I think it's a good standard paper. The thickness is also quite decent. It has to be somewhere around 150 to 200 GSM. It's not stated on the website, but that's how thick it feels. This is the same paper that they use in the hinged lay flat book as well. So although the binding is different, is the same paper type used in this book as well. The second paper type is the glossy upgrade, which you can see in this book. Now instantly you can see how shiny this is compared to the other one. It's very glossy, feels a little bit plasticky, which is kind of expected with some of these high gloss pages, especially when they are laminated and it's not a photographic paper. But if I come close up, you can see that the colors are much richer. There's a much better dynamic range and it also disguises the tiny dots that come with digital printing much better. Let me put the two next to each other so you can see the difference. So this one is the glossy and the matte. The fourth paper type is the deluxe lay flat, which has a, a silky satin texture, almost luster. I think they used to call it luster, but now they call it satin because um, it's not quite luster, but it, it has a very, very fine sandy texture and a very subtle sheen, more sheen than the standard paper, but not as glossy as the high gloss. The colors look much nicer on this one as well. It has a bit more dynamic range and the texture again is quite nice. It's much better with uh, fingerprints. And of course, since in this binding type, the two sheets are stuck together, it's actually a double thickness. So it's more around 300, 400 GSM. 
This is definitely my personal favorite. It has enough sheen, nice dynamic range, but it doesn't feel kind of um, plastic like the high gloss version. Let's move on to the print quality. All of these books are printed on digital press printers. And as I mentioned already before, the colors came out quite well and the print quality is good too. It's not a silver halide or an inkjet print, so it's not going to have the same detail, but the colors look nicely balanced. There's nothing really oversaturated. Of course, depending on the paper you choose, it's going to look more vibrant on the high gloss and the luster paper than on the standard or the matte. The print is of course made up of tiny dots because that's how digital prints work, press printers. There's one thing you can do to enhance the quality of your prints and that's the six color printing. And in this book, I chose the upgrade for the six color printing. I have to admit, it's not a gigantic difference. It's not going to be extremely obvious. And of course, if you choose the high gloss paper, it's already going to look much nicer than the other one. But there is definitely a difference. The dot structure is much smaller. It's less noticeable. The colors seem a little bit richer and it almost feels like there's more ink going onto the paper. So if money is not an issue for you, I would definitely urge you to upgrade all your Shutterfly prints to six color printing. It's really worth it. And it's going to make your print the closest it can go to, a, to an inkjet print or a silver halide print. Let's talk a little bit about the editor as well. I don't want to go into too much detail because I've already done a tutorial on the Shutterfly editor on YouTube link is going to be in the description below. What you need to know about the Shutterfly editor is that an online editor and you have to basically choose from many, many ready-made book templates. And these book templates, as you can see, look very funky. They contain um, stickers, backgrounds, all kinds of elements, layouts, text elements. And of course you can fine tune them to your own liking, but you have something to start off with. And all you need to do is uh, just replace the photos and edit the text. Besides the, the ready-made templates, the editor also has lots of tools for creativity. So you can create something that's reflecting your personality, not just the ready-made book that everybody else uses. Now there's one thing here I want to show you, which is a memorabilia pocket. This is one of the upgrades that you can choose at the checkout process. And it basically fits the size of the book. And it's a really good um, idea for a travel book or, or any other kind of book, even if it's a wedding book, because you can put your wedding invitation in it or something like a treasure from the day. The pocket fits the size of the book and it has two um, stickers. You have to peel it off and stick it at the beginning or at the end of the book and you can start collecting things into the plastic envelope. Right, so I showed you the memorabilia pocket in the close-up shot and I want to show you the second upgrade now which is the boxes, that the gift box that you can choose for these photo books and this is one of the gift boxes that you can choose So that's the size of it and I think you can choose from four different designs. Now the box itself looks really cute, it's nice, it's a very cheap box, only for four dollars or four pounds. My problem with the box is that, so that's the size of my photo book and that's the size of the box. And then the box, of course, has this interesting cardboard inside, which has lots of creases, so you can kind of make any size photo book fit into the box. But when you put this inside, it just doesn't look great because the book is so much smaller and it almost looks like some manufacturing um, cardboard thingy inside. So as a gift box, I wouldn't want to see this inside. I would rather want to see something padded or a spongy thing to keep the book in place. When you buy a small book with a box and that's what you have space in your luggage for or something, and then you get a box which is three times the book, then you're not going to be so happy. So it's just something about the box to keep in mind that all of the boxes are really big, I think around 12 by 12 inches in size. You have to use these kind of uh, creased um, cardboard bits to make sure your book doesn't move inside the box. Now let's talk a little bit about shipping. So the main reason why I didn't get more Shutterfly books is because the shipping is so expensive and it's a very silly system that they have. 
I can't speak for you if you are in the US, I'm in the United Kingdom, so I can only speak for what I experienced as a buyer from here. So basically, uh, the shipping outside the US is very expensive and it's different for every single product. So it's pointless for me to give you a price now because um, it's going to be different for your photo book or for your products. I paid $35, I think, for the shipping of the photo book. And the annoying thing is that every single item you add into your shopping basket is going to create another shipping fee. So for example, if one photo book is $15 and then you add the second photo book, it's going to be $30 instead of like 16 or 17. So that's the first thing. The second thing that really made me a little bit angry about the shipping process, I got these four books and the four books were sent in four separate parcels from across the ocean. So when we live in a world with a climate crisis, then these four books could have easily fitted into this one box and I could have got them in one parcel, which means that I only have to stay home once to wait for my parcel. I only have to pay it once and for them it's much easier as well because it's cheaper to send one parcel instead of four separate parcels from four separate locations in the US. So I think that's very inefficient when it comes to shipping, but I also understand that some of their products are printed in one station in the US and some of the other products are printed at a different station. So clearly they can't put them into the same box, but still the two parcels could be joined together at the main hub and sent to Europe in one single box instead of four flights taking my very small photo books. So that's about shipping that I wanted to just mention. Regarding pricing, Shutterfly books are quite reasonably priced and one thing you'll always see on the website is 50% off. Now in the beginning, a few years ago, they used to give a code every single week, just like Mixbook, but now it just says 50% off, no code needed. And I've been following the website for like at least four years now, and I've never seen a single day or week when there was not a 50% off discount. So I think the prices that are crossed out are just basically for decoration and the actual price is the 50% off. Now around certain holidays or certain days of the year, you can see an extra 20% off, an extra 10% off or free unlimited pages or free shipping. So they have some better deals, but the basic deal is 50% off, which you'll always get if you go onto the Shutterfly website. Comparing it to the other three giants, Mixbook, um, Blurb or Photobook Worldwide, I think Shutterfly is slightly more expensive, but I was discussing this in detail in my ultimate Photobook comparison video of the four giants. So you can have a look at that video if you want to see them compared price-wise and quality-wise as well. Link is going to be in the description description below. Now let's see the final verdict because there are lots of pros and lots of cons for these Shutterfly photo books. Let's start with the pros. Their layout and the editor is really good. I find it very easy to use. I have a tutorial on it which you can watch if you are lost in the editor. I also like the clean layout of information on the website. The other thing I like about the Shutterfly website, not so much about the photo books, is that they have so many photo gifts. And I know it doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the photo books, but many or more often than not, we buy gifts for other people and sometimes you buy a bundle of gifts. And if you can do it on one website, that's a plus because again, you don't have to look at for gifts at a different website. The Lay Flood book is really high quality. I like the Lay Flood, the Deluxe Lay Flood book. It's a good binding, good paper and good print quality. And finally, the soft cover book is quite good as well for the price. It's sturdy, good print quality and it has a nice color balance as well. Now let's see some of the cons, why I would want to look for alternatives. So first of all, the price of shipping outside the US is very expensive and the parcels came separately. I didn't like the box because it's the wrong size, it's not the size of the book. I was very disappointed with the perfect binding, not because of the quality of the binding, but because it doesn't go with the layouts of Shutterfly. As I showed you in my close-up shots, most of Shutterfly's layouts go across two pages. They are double page spreads for lay flat books. And when you use them in perfect bound books by Shutterfly, it's going to be messed up in the middle. Things are going to be missing or you're going to get a double nose and also the lines are not aligned properly. The other thing that is not so great about the choice or selection is that certain options or attributes are locked to certain book types so you can't have all the options for any kind of book type. 
Well, that's all my moans and groans about Shutterfly and all the positives as well. I hope this review is going to help you to understand the difference between their books, what to watch out for, and what are the good things about Shutterfly. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. Links are going to be in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.